What's going on friends? Today we're going to be learning about how to enhance window light here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. What is going on guys? My name is Brendan from Outbound Media and you can find me on Instagram at Burnwells. Before I get started, I just wanted to let anyone who's new here know that I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday. So if that's something you'd be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So what we're going to be talking about today is how to enhance window light slash create artificial window light. All right. So first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to create a new layer. And then so the sunlight that we want to have, since this photo is sort of soft and there's lots of whites, we don't want the light to be super saturated. So just over here on my color palette I'm gonna to go to like a sort of somewhere between like yellow and orange and I'm just gonna go closer to the white end of things and then maybe come down a bit just so I it's just so there is a little bit of that color in there so now I'm just gonna get my brush tool make sure my flow and opacity is at a hundred percent and I'm just gonna size up my brush and make sure my hardness is down at zero percent now I'm just gonna size it up to about this size that's sort of the size I'm looking for and I'm just gonna tap once now I'm going to go back up to my color palette and I'm going to make it a little bit less saturated, shrink down my brush size a little bit more, and click on the inside of our last brush dot thing. So now we sort of have our sun orb on our separate layer. And so what we'll do is we'll just name this layer to sun glow. Now we can go up to our layer mode and we're just going to go down to and change it to linear dodge add. Now we can just go down to our fill slider and we're just going to bring that down till we get till it sort of reveals a little bit of color onto her here which is sort of right right in this case about 79% for now but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my move tool and sort of play around with the positioning and the width of this little bit of sunlight to better suit what I'm looking for so I kind of want it to extend pretty much down the length of the window almost entirely kind of like this perfect so now I might even bring down my fill just a little bit so if you're unsure I just go to 0% and then I just sort of work my way up until I find something that I like so I'm gonna go right about 48 48 percent looks good to me all right, so I'm just going to press enter. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to learn how to add in a lens flare, but now we're going to learn how to add a lens flare on a separate layer. So some of you guys might already know this, some of you maybe don't, but if you, just for example here, I'm just going to duplicate my background layer and I'm going to add a lens flare to it. So if I, to add a lens flare, you go to filter and then down to render and then down here to lens flare. So now you have a couple options here. So you have your different lens types and of course different lenses have different have a different flare to them, right? So just to be safe, we're going to stick with our 50 to 300 zoom. This is sort of the flare that most camera lenses have. So the brightness is up to you. You can make it so it's just changing the brightness of the overall flare, but it doesn't doesn't really matter too much. So I'm just going to keep it at 100%. And with this little point here, I can drag the source of the flare wherever I want. So basically, the flare will stretch out from wherever this point is anchored. So I'm going to put it right in the center of where my window light is and I'm just going to click OK. So now, cool, we got this lens flare, but the next thing that I always do with lens flares is I blur them. So if I wanted to blur it, I get a ga Gaussian blur. Now look what happened. My entire image just got blurred, but I only wanted it to affect my lens flare. So here's what we can do to make it separate. So I'm just going to undo everything here. So now we're going to create a new layer and we're going to fill it with black. So you can ignore this. This is just our sun glow. So I'm, I'm, I'll turn it off to make it a little less confusing. So now we have our layer one, which is just filled with black. So now with our layer one selected, if we go up to filter, then down here to render and then lens flare. So now the lens flare, you're going to want to anchor it in like roughly the general area of where your light source is. So this is sort of where our window is sort of in that vicinity in relation to the frame here. So now I can just click OK. 
So now as you see, our lens flare is just on this black and if I turn this on and off, the lens flare also goes away. Now you're probably thinking, oh well, do we have to cut this out or something like that? No. So here, here's the trick. Now we can go to our layer mode and we can just go down to screen, which t gets rid of all the black. And now it's sort of faint with the light, but our lens flare is on its own layer. So when I turn that on and off, you can see the difference. So now when I add a blur to it, a Gaussian blur, I'm just going to make something really subtle and soft here. Now, as you see, it only blurred our lens flare and not our entire image like it did before. So that's how you can get your lens flares a little bit more customizable on a separate layer. You just put them on black and then change the blending mode to screen. That way, all the black gets taken away. And what you're left with is your lens flare by itself, just the way you wanted it. Now I'm actually, look, turn this back on, I'm just going to maybe just bring this down a little bit. Now I'm going to duplicate my background layer and I'm just going to grab my dodge tool. So with my dodge tool, the reason I'm going to be using this is because we sort of made this brighter, the light on her body here should also sort of match that. So like, see how soft this light is in the shadow here? If the light was actually this bright, this would probably be a lot more aggressive of light. So to fix that issue that we have here, I'm just going to, with my, with my dodge tool, I'm just going to go and paint around the edges of her body to sort of brighten up her skin a little to match our new brightness of window light. Doing this will make a night and day difference, even though it is quite subtle, as you'll see here. It is quite subtle, but it really does make things look a lot more realistic. You will thank yourself for doing it after when you get all the compliments of people like, whoa, that looks so legit. And you'll be like, oh yeah, I know, because I used Dodge and Burn to make everything match better. Cool, so just turning that on and off, you can see the difference that it made. So, next thing is I want to make all of the colors sort of blend a little bit better. So to do that really quickly, I'm just going to go over to my color balance layer adjustment, and I'm just going to start my shadows here. And I'm going to sort of maybe up the blues a little bit. Something like this up the blues, up the cyan, and then I'm going to go to my highlights and sort of do the opposite. So I'm going to bring in some yellow and then also bring in a bit of red. Now I'm going to go over to my midtones and now I can just sort of play around and adjust things to fit better overall. So I'm going to add a bit more cyan and some a little bit of yellow. Cool, so now I can just turn this on and off and see the difference that it made. So it just sort of gave us a little bit of a better color grade, I guess you could say, of our overall image and just made everything like blend a little bit more and made that light pop. So as easy as that, that is how you can enhance window light slash create artificial window light. If you have any tutorial suggestions, I would love to hear them. So make sure to leave a comment down below of what tutorials you would like to see in the coming weeks. If you want to see more of my work, make sure to find me on Instagram at Burnwells, or if you want a more complete portfolio or even contact me, have any questions, things like that, you can do all that through my website, outboundmedia.net. Again, my name is Brendan from Outbound Media, and I hope to see you back here next Wednesday for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then.